everybody, Chad Westport here, and I'm back with another episode of Just One Thing. And today we've got a really special guest. I would call him an expert in the field. And this is something that absolutely can make the difference of successful or disaster when it comes to your home cultivation. So I'd like to turn it over to our guest here and let him tell you a little bit about his Just One Thing. So good afternoon, Matthew Gates. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well. Excellent. Thank you. So I'm sure everybody's on the edge of their seat by now, but what is your just one thing you think all new growers should be aware of? My just one thing is crop scouting. It's evaluating your plants. Some people do this sort of, you know, they go into their grow space and they're doing other things. And sure, they check their plants as well. And sometimes that's enough. I mean, other times you should have a dedicated time where in which you actually thoroughly go through your plants. It's so important for evaluating all of the various things that you do with your plants, right? So not just nutritively, but also curatively, prophylactically with regards to pests. I work with pests as an IPM specialist. So that's where my main concern is focused personally and professionally but you're also evaluating other things that you input like mycorrhizae, if you apply those or other beneficial microbes, as well as predator mites and insects and things like this. If you actually have pests already, then if you're applying some sort of a treatment regimen, you have to evaluate and see whether that's actually working. People ask me all the time, how long do I need to apply X to have the result that I need? And the answer to that is always, well, what do you see after you apply it, you know, and maybe you have to be more aggressive, maybe you have to be less aggressive, you know, maybe you see that uh, you applied something and it harmed your plants, you you think, because you looked at it right afterwards, and you're pretty sure that damage wasn't there before. So that kind of stuff is very highly important. When when you're scouting for, say, insects on your plant, um, where do they like to hang out? What is a good area to check? Do I need to check the whole plant? Or do I just check one little area and call it good? If you were growing in a large uh, area, I typically would tell people to do something like a random search where they have maybe rows or some other sort of setup and they sort of randomly assess a certain portion of their plants so that they're not always looking at the same thing over time because that can very much mm-hmm. bias you. You want to sample kind of randomly. But when you do so, you want to be looking at all aspects of the plant. You want to be looking at the tops of the foliage, the bottom of the foliage, the middle part of the foliage, the interior and the exterior. Um, typically, I advise people to look to take a, a sample of a certain amount of leaves and check on the top of the leaves, on the bottoms of the leaves, check the pedicel, check the, uh, the stem itself, the trunk of the plant. And also, if you can, check the roots and the topsoil as well, because you can get pests and also beneficials at various parts of the plant. And of course, when you are flowering, that's also a majorly important place to check for things. So are there many bugs that like to hang out, maybe say around the base of the plant or some that only hang out in the top of the plant? Are there any specific pests that we should be looking for in these areas? Common to like a home garden? Sorry to interrupt you there, but common to the home garden. Absolutely. So there are a few places that you could look. Um, And the topsoil is very common for people to encounter beneficial organisms like predatory mites and even things like springtails, which in some cases can cause damage, certainly, or pill bugs for that matter, little isopods, crustaceans, actually. Um, So those things can be found, and they're oftentimes uh, mistaken for something that could be quite a bit more dangerous or detrimental. Uh, when they're really a lot more benign, typically. You can also come across things like fungus gnats and shore flies and even uh, the indomitable rice root aphid for a lot of people. Uh, at the stem level, at the trunk level, um, you might find organisms like uh, various insects that might be crawling up the stem. In some cases, maybe even caterpillars and things like that, little stink bugs, leaf hoppers, things like this. 
And as you go up into the foliage, you'll find the vast majority of the pests that a lot of people are familiar with, uh, like uh, spider mites, thrips, um, russet mites, broad mites, white flies, a lot of which do tend to live on the ventral side or the bottom side of the leaves. And there's a few reasons for this, but basically it's more covert, they're hidden away a little bit better, and um, the light, and in some cases, ultraviolet light can be uh, damaging or disabling somewhat, uh, so they do prefer to be on the underside. In the flower, it's very common for people to encounter things like botrytis fungi, um, and also caterpillars like uh, the corn earworm that um, likes to bore into the flower, which is very common and people deal with um, much more lately than usual. Yes, and we see that a lot on the outdoor growers. Uh, and, and you had mentioned beneficials before, and this is something um, that I, you know, struggled with, or maybe other new growers struggle with. We see something moving and we're like, holy heck, get it out. How or what would be a good way of trying to identify something that we see? Is it, you know, how many eyeballs it has or does it have antenna? What, uh, how do you identify something in that process? Well, I have to say it is a complicated thing sometimes. The very best thing that you can do if you see an unidentified organism in your plants is to, uh, if you can, sort of take a picture of it, a focused picture of it, or maybe some footage of it. That will be invaluable to you because what if it flies away? What if it moves away or it's quick? Or uh, you, know, you turn around, you come back and it's not there. Uh, you know, it's very important to be um, quick and decisive when it comes to that sort of a thing. And also, if you can, also take a sample of it if you can. You can actually uh, deign to touch them or sometimes um, convince them to get into a test tube or something <laughs> like this. Uh, there's various ways and methods that people might do that. Uh, and that'll be very important because you can reach out to people like myself or uh, uh, your extension agent, if you have an agricultural mm -hmm. extension agent in your area, that they could take a look. And uh, uh, oftentimes they do this sort of a thing for free. Um, so that people can have this uh, valuable resource of knowledge. Um, if you don't have any of those resources, you can go online sometimes. You can find keys for certain basic uh, groups of insects that people okay. often come across. Um, and if you cross-reference what you're looking at with things like video footage and pictures that other people have taken of those organisms that are pests of cannabis, for example, uh, then that can be very useful. Um, the reason why I can't rely on things on like leg count or antennae or things like this, because you've got uh, species in, in groups like mites and insects, for example, or even fungi and uh, bacteria that can look uh, very similar to each other. Um, and they'll have similar sorts of structures and things. So you can't just say, oh, it has six legs. It's a bad insect because even the good insects have six legs. Yes. And I'm sure everybody knows about the seven leg spider out there. No, exactly. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, th this has been excellent, Matthew. I do appreciate your time. This is something, again, that can save a person's garden. And, and, and I want to let people know, too, where they can find you uh, for maybe some follow-up information. And also, you have a lot of great content and material out and there. Everybody watching, these are going to be down in the show notes. Uh, Xenthanol.com as the website. Uh, your YouTube channel is Xenthanol as well patreon.com backslash xenthanol. Um, you can actually get some personal one-on-one -on -one assistance there and there's different levels. Trust me, check it out. On Instagram, you are at Sync Angel. And I've got the spelling down there for everybody. So. Well, I want to give you uh, one last chance if you had any closing words, but this has been awesome. I appreciate your time. Um, any, any closing comments? I just want to reach out to people. Uh, this sort of information is invaluable. It's important yes. for people to know it. And I'm very passionate about making that information available to you, to, to people who need this, especially beginners, but also seasoned veterans. So if you're interested in this, take a look at my videos on my YouTube channel. I make tons of observational footage available and other treatment information as well, both for beneficials and for pests. Awesome. Well, this has been great. And yeah, um, people like me, experienced growers, we all call this guy. He's over there. Okay. We all call this guy. So everybody have an excellent evening. Matthew Gates, party on buddy. Have a good one. Bye. Uh...